My name is Hannah, and this is my no buy year. My no buy year. I'm doing a tag. One of you requested that I do Kelly Gooch's only keep one tag. If I could only keep one of each of the staple makeup items, which one would it be? It's interesting because my no buy year is kind of a default if I could only keep one for certain items, the kinds of things that you run out of, like primer and mascara, because my rules state that when I run out of something entirely, like when I run out of every single mascara that I have, I can repurchase just one. So I have been forced already to think about what's going to happen when I can only purchase one mascara and then only have one. This tag is right up my alley. It's something that the no buy year is already forcing me to think about. But it was interesting to sit down and actually pick the items for this video. Doing the tag for a video is just a little bit different from the reality of the no buy year. There's some overlap, but there are some differences. So let's go ahead and get started with the meat of the video. If I could only keep one primer. Now, this is a little bit difficult. As some of you know, I've been trying to figure out once all of my primers run dry, if I'm going to repurchase an illuminating primer or kind of a mattifying silicone primer. And honestly, I, I really long for an illuminating primer. I love using an illuminating primer, but I think that if I have to only have one, the hardcore silicone Backle, the smoothing, mattifying canvas is what I need because there are times when I need that and then I can add illumination on top, but the reverse isn't true. So unfortunately, when you can only keep one, sometimes it's not the thing that you're the most into at that time or the thing that you kind of love the most or the most excited by because right now I'm the most excited by illuminating primers. I've been trying out the Laura Mercier one. I really love the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. I really love the Burberry one. I had a sample of that once and I was kind of toying with the idea of repurchasing it. But if it really comes down to it, if, I, if my feet are being held to the fire and I can only have one primer, I think that I have to go with my Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. And as you can see, this is almost finished. I am going to have to make the decision soon. And as of today, I'm not saying I won't change my mind, but as of today, if I could only have one, it would be this one. This is a very thick silicone primer, but it's formulated with oils. It has rosehip and argan oil in it. And what that means for me is that it layers beautifully over my very oil-heavy morning skincare routine. The last couple of steps in my morning skincare routine are to put on a marula oil, and then after that, a very hydrating, moisturizing sunscreen. Most silicone primers that do that smoothing, pore perfecting thing pill when I put them over my skincare. And I expected this to pill too when I had a sample of it because I had seen reviews with people talking about pilling being a problem for this. So you could have knocked me over with a feather the first time I actually tried it, and it went on beautifully. I don't usually layer it super thick over my skincare. I usually use just one full pump and that's it. But sometimes if I'm going to go full glam for a photo shoot or something, I will use two pumps and I can actually put kind of a thick layer of this and it still doesn't pill. It must be the oils and maybe it's something to do with the way it interacts with my skin. Something about this just makes it perfect, perfect, perfect for me. It goes on smooth and I love the way my skin looks after I put this on. It looks soft, smooth, kind of like baby skin. It doesn't cover blemishes or anything, but it provides a very, very good canvas to follow with products that do cover blemishes. I was getting seduced by my illuminating primer, the Laura Mercier deluxe sample size that I've been trying out, and I was starting to think that I might want that. I pulled this out again today because I wanted to wear all of the products that I picked, which I, I am wearing all the products that I picked, and when I use it again, I just 
I once again remembered why I fell in love with it, why I bought the full size. I really, really love this primer. I recommend getting a sample size of it before you buy it because I've seen a lot of bad reviews of this. Liv Loves Her Makeup recently tried this in her Shop My Stash last week and she said that it pills on her. So I don't know why it works so beautifully for me even though it seems to have not worked out for a number of people. But you know, if you're curious or if you think you have a similar skin type to me or similar issues, this is pretty much the only primer I've ever tried that protected the concealer on my chin from breaking up towards the end of the day. And on me, it doesn't break up because of oil. It breaks up because my skin is so dry that it soaks up the moisture from the product and leaves kind of a desert, a cracked desert of product on the skin. With this, it doesn't happen, and maybe it's because it's such a thick layer, it truly does provide a barrier between my actual skin and the makeup on top, so that they're not interacting as much, which I actually think is good. That's I think that's good for my acne-prone skin, and obviously it's worked out to be really good for the appearance of the makeup on top. I'm really, really into this primer, and if I could only have one, it would be the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. Okay, moving on to foundation. I don't wear foundation on a daily basis. I'm not wearing it now. I wear foundation when I am going to be photographed under studio lighting for product shots for my business, and occasionally I'll wear it to go out dancing tango, or if my skin is really wrecked, like if I'm having really, really, really bad breakouts, really blotchy. Sometimes I'll put on a, a thin, sheared out layer of foundation and then go in with concealer, but I don't usually wear foundation. Still, I threw one in this video because it's a tag. This foundation doesn't come with a pump, and then if you buy the pump and you put it in, the cap no longer fits over it. So it just has this pump and it's not very clean. I don't, what can I say? I don't keep everything obsessively clean in my life. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway, this is a NARS Sheer Glow Foundation, and the reason that I would keep it above any other is because of the shade range. That's pretty much the only reason. It's a very, very, very pale color, and it has a golden undertone. Almost every foundation in existence, when you get to the very lightest end of the spectrum, it's pink. NARS tends to lean yellow, very yellow. Across the board, NARS tends to lean very yellow. So they're very, very palest shades in concealer and in foundation usually are yellow enough for me. When I put this on, my face matches my neck pretty well. The performance is fine. It's, it's fine. Uh, it, it may be that if I continued to search, I could find a foundation that performed better on my dry skin, but this performs well enough and the color is correct. And for the purposes for which I need foundation, which have more to do with look than wear time, because I'm putting on a face, going in for the photo shoot, and then that's kind of it. Nara Sheer Glow in the color Siberia is the one for me. My reasoning is the same when it comes to concealer, and my shape tape is really gross right now. I've already popped out the stopper to get the last of the product out, and it's just a mess. It's leaking all over the place. I'm trying to make it last as long as possible because it's my no-buy year. But once this truly kicks the bucket, which is, is pretty soon, it's going to happen pretty soon, I'll probably repurchase shape tape, and it's because of the shade. Again, it's the lightest neutral to yellow concealer I have ever been able to find. Even the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the lightest shade Chantilly is a little bit darker than this. And that bright white neutral is what I need to highlight my skin. It's not the ideal color for blemish concealing. I use a separate concealer for blemishes, and I almost consider them to be two categories this kind of concealer and blemish concealer, but for the purposes of this video, if I'm being very, very faithful to the tag, if I could only choose one concealer at all across the board, it would be Tarte Shape Tape in the color Fair. Moving on, moving on. I'm trying to make this video kind of quick. My videos have gotten so long all the time. They're always so long. So I'm trying to be like, I'm trying to be one of those girls. One of those girls, you know? If I could only keep one blush, would be the Clinique Cheek Pop in the color Fig Pop. I really, really, really love this figgy color. It's kind of like 
both warm and cool. It's just a beautiful formula. It's really, really natural looking. It blends into the skin. It doesn't sit on top of the skin. It's not powdery. It's a really, really beautiful formula. It's got kind of a dusky feel to it, this color. Kind of dusky. I find it flattering for my skin and my coloring, and I'm just really, really into this color. Clinique Cheek Pop. These blushes are effing beautiful. I was surprised that I didn't pick a NARS blush for this because I love NARS blushes, but when I really, really held myself to it and, and thought if I only had to have one, if I only could pick one, it's this one. It goes with a bunch of different makeup looks. It goes with cool tone, it goes with warm tone, and it looks really beautiful as a statement makeup item. Sometimes I do like extreme blush draping, like very wearable editorial all blush look, and then buff a little bit of blush into the crease of my eye as well, and have that pretty much be the look. This color is beautiful for that. I'm really into Clinique Fig Pop, and if I could only keep one, this would be it. Okay, bronzer. So my pick for bronzer is kind of unusual because the product is actually marketed as a highlighter, and it's also broken and very delicate. The Kevin Aquan Neo Highlighter in the color Sahara. <laughs> it's so tragic. It's so tragic. So this is one of those highlighters that goes from a more champagne-y color here down to a darker bronzy color here. And you can see just by me holding it up next to my face probably that this is bronze, a bronzer for me, this dark side. It works as a bronzer for me. And the illumination is so very faint and natural that it's perfect. And here's the deal with me and bronzer. If I'm just trying to add some color to my face, if I'm just trying to bring back a little bit of dimension, Blush is what I use, and I use it, I apply it the way that people apply bronzer. If I want to create a bronzy look, if I want to sort of be bronze goddess for a day, then I need to go for something that is still rosy. And that's kind of what this illuminator is. The darker side of it is like a rosy, bronzy glow. And if I'm going for bronze, goddess, then I'm into that slight illumination all over the face. So that's why this is the perfect bronzer for me. If I could only keep one, I would keep this. I used to take it with me everywhere before it broke. I loved it so much. I used to travel with it. I would use it in my crease. I would use it like it was like my main go-to. And now it just sits on my vanity as a very delicate and sad little broken thing. I've considered repressing it, but because of that ombre effect, it would be difficult, if not impossible, to repress correctly. I could try to break it in half and mix one with alcohol and mix the other with alcohol and then press them in and blend them together. Maybe I'll do that. That could make an interesting video. Let me know if you would like to see me attempt to repress a a Kevin Aquan Neo highlighter. Anyway, if I had to pick one bronzer that's the only one that I could keep, it would be this product, which I use for bronzing. Highlighter was, this was hard. This was hard for me. The struggle is real to choose which highlighter I would keep if I could only keep one. I feel a little bit fickle when it comes to highlighters. I think if I had made this video a month ago, I might have picked something different than what I picked today. I found it hard to get in touch with my actual answer, but I, I have an answer and I, will, and I will give you my answer. Here's my answer. If I could only keep one highlighter, it would be Rivage from the NARS palette. So this is the Bord de Plage palette. It has two bronzers in it and it's got four highlighters. So Rivage is the very, very pale with, it's like a pale, it's like a very, very, very pale pink with a slight iridescence to it. And I like it because the color doesn't show up as anything on my skin, it's just illumination. And the formula, if you buff it in, really melts into the skin. This isn't available as a single, so if I could only keep one, I guess I would be popping this pan out of, <laughs> of the palette. It's my most versatile and effective highlighter. It can be really blingy, but it can also be very natural. And it layers with any look because it doesn't have a color. It's just glow. And that slight iridescence means that it can be played up to be more editorial, but if I don't put too much of it on my brush or if I really, really buff it out, it just looks like 
I'm glowing from within. So I find it to be very versatile. I really love the color. I really love the glow. I reach for it almost every day at this point. If I could only keep one highlighter, it would be Rivage by NARS. This highlighter was also available in that three pan, can't remember what it was called. NARS came out with a three pan highlighting palette and then that sold out. It was limited edition. Then they came out with this four pan highlighter with two bronzers. It's also limited edition, but I don't think it's sold out yet. And I'm just wondering when they're going to come out with single highlighters. If Rivage was in a single, I'm eventually going to hit pan on it and use it up in this palette. I would really love it to be in a single because I think it's a beautiful highlighter. The other three in that palette are also really beautiful and I use them a lot as well. I just use Rivage the most. Let's talk about eyebrows. If I could only keep one brow color, it would be the Anastasia, Anastasia? It would be the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in Dark Brown. I will link the video where I talk about brow products and you can hear more about this. And surprise, surprise, if I could only keep one gel, it would be the Givenchy Mr. Groom Brow, Mr. Brow Groom. The Givenchy Mr. Brow Groom. I only have one brow gel. I got to the point where I needed to buy a new one during my no buy year. I bought this one. So the proof is in the pudding, my friends. I can only have one brow gel for the rest of 2018 and this is the one that I picked. Okay, lipstick. Here's how I feel. If I could truly only have one lipstick, I would want it to be a statement color because I'm happy going without lipstick. I'm happy with just a lip gloss or a chapstick or, or anything. My lips are pretty pigmented and I frequently do a look with eyes and um, cheek drama and no lip color or something very, very subtle or, or faint. So if I could only have one lipstick, it would be a waste to choose something that's like my lips but better, to choose something that's just neutral. I don't think I would do that. If my entire lipstick collection were to disappear tomorrow and I only had the chance to save one beautiful, precious jewel, it would be Tom Ford Wild Ginger. And I have to admit, it's partly because it's such a beautiful thing. It, I can't really bear the thought of losing this baby. But it's not just the incredible packaging, it's also the formula. It's, it's luxury through and through, and the packaging is really wonderful and special, and, it's, and I love that it's luxury, but the formula is tenacious, it's comfortable, it's beautiful, and the color is the, the statement red of my dreams. It's like really, really orangey, rich and bright, and the finish is, is satin, it's not too shiny, it's not too matte, it's just the perfect statement lip. It's, it's the crown jewel in my collection, and if I could only keep one, it would be Tom Ford Wild Ginger. Even the name is perfect. If I could only keep one mascara, let's talk about that first. Um, it would be the IT Cosmetics Superhero Stretch. This isn't perfect to me. I'm uh, very annoyed by the packaging. See how, see how it gets all gunky around the there. Um, I'm pretty careful with this. There's nothing that you can do to keep that from happening. And that bothers me. Usually if I get a product and there's some major packaging flaw like this, no matter how much I love the product, I won't repurchase it. And I'm, I'm sort of toying with the idea actually of repurchasing a mascara other than this one. <sighs> but when it comes down to it, the formula just cannot be beat for me. It's like fluffy, thick, long editorial lashes that look the most like false lashes of anything that I have ever discovered. Actually, I'm wearing it today but without any eyeshadow, so you might be able to get a pretty good sense of how it looks. I don't know if you can see just how dramatic my lashes look. In real life, the difference between what this can do and what any of my other mascaras can do is, is profound. Several coats of this just gives me my life. So if I could only pick one mascara today, it would be IT Cosmetics Superhero Stretch. 
And lastly, if I could only keep one of my eyeshadow palettes, this was a tough decision because I ended up with something kind of boring, I think, a little bit. Um, I had to be practical. If I could only have one eyeshadow palette, it would need to have a shade for setting my lid, so a shade that's pretty much pretty close to the color of my eyelid. It would need to have a cool toned taupe because that's pretty much my go-to simple eye. If I do nothing else but I want to put on eyeshadow, I, I just buff a taupe into my crease. And I don't want the taupe to be too warm. I don't want it to look like a super peachy eye all the time. A neutral or cool toned taupe. And the palette would have to have a black because I really need a black to do most of my even slightly more dramatic eye looks. And it would need to have a very, very bright, shimmery white that I could use to create that effect of the inner corner, like a bright inner corner that comes out over the first third of the lid to make the eyes seem wider and bigger. That's an effect that I use almost every time I do a full eye look. I need a certain kind of bright, creamy, white eyeshadow that's iridescent or that's sparkly or shimmery to make that effect work. So when I looked at my collection and I tried to find something that had all of those things in it, the one that fit the bill was the NARS Narcissist Loaded Palette. There's the lid setting shade, there's the cool tone taupe, obviously there's the black, and then this here in the upper corner is the really nice really shiny that's the really nice really shiny um, inner corner highlight I'm not wearing any eyeshadow today I used a tiny bit of this and a smudge brush to kind of smoke out my lower lash line but I was just not feeling that life today I, I couldn't really get myself together to do an eye look so I don't have these shadows on my eyes but you can imagine right it's a, it's like a go-to neutral palette in addition to those four shades that I depend on, there are a lot of other options. There's a really beautiful dark brown. The shadows perform flawlessly. I really like this palette. I would be sad if I could only have this palette. I don't get a huge kick out of it, really. But it is the one that I reach for when I'm doing an eye look and the palette that I have in front of me doesn't have something that I need. So if I have a palette without a black, I reach for this. Palette without a dark brown, I reach for this. Palette without that inner corner bright highlight shade, I reach for this. If I need to set my lid, I reach for this. So this is really, this is my go-to palette. It's my really important one. It's the one that holds down the fort in my collection. If I could only have one, it would be this, the Nara's Narcissist Loaded. I'm really glad that I don't have to only keep one of a lot of these items, but my no by year is forcing me to just pick one, one kind of primer. I can't have both a mattifying and an illuminating primer. One kind of mascara, I can't have both a black and a brown mascara, for example. Um, so that's been really interesting, and the thing that I've learned is that it's not the end of the world. I'm really learning to let go of perfection, let go of that feeling that if it's not the exact perfect thing that fits into the exact category of thing that you thought you were trying to do with your face, no one's gonna care, the world's not gonna end, you're still gonna go about your day looking pretty good, and sometimes, the thing that I didn't think I wanted, but that's the only thing I had to use, sometimes those things surprise me and make me really glad that I'm doing my makeup under these constrained circumstances for the year of 2018. Needless to say, I am learning a lot. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for asking me to do this tag. This was really fun. Tags are fun. Let me know if there are any other tag videos that you want me to do. I hope you will subscribe to my channel if you're new. I hope you will give me a thumbs up whether you are new or not. And I hope that you will take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. Yeah, bring her in here. <laughs> Sadie, if you could only keep one, what would you keep?
She'd keep mouses. She could only keep one. She'd keep mouses. <laughs>